What's going on? And welcome in the Pels and Whistles presented by Bet Online right here on the Believe Network. I'm Daniel Salerson alongside Rel Myers. And what a weekend it was for your New Orleans Pelicans. A sweep of the Los Angeles Lakers and the Sacramento Kings on Saturday and Sunday. Have the Pelicans feeling pretty good? Two game winning streak and look to continue the homestand with another win on Tuesday night against the Atlanta Hawks. Rel, how you feeling? I feel like the hat's back on. We both have the matching shirts today if you're watching on YouTube. But just like the Pelicans, we're on the same page on this Monday. Yeah, we're in sync, man. It was crazy when I turned my camera on, and I was like, hey, what are you wearing my shirt? But yeah, the hat's back. The birds are back. Maybe. We'll see. But uh, yeah, this weekend was a lot of fun. Um, and, and it's always fun to beat the Lakers when they have so many Lakers fans in the blender. Um, you know, send them home with a, a sat look on their face is always a good time. Absolutely. And if you're looking for a new shirt to wear, you can go to the Believe Network and find in Willie Green We Trust that is available for all you Pels fans out there. Or if you're just a Willie Green fan from the Phoenix right. days or the Detroit days or whatever you want to do it, <laughs> feel free to pick one up here and then you can match us as uh, we'll wear those too at some point throughout the season. Episode number 30 yeah. today. We appreciate everyone that has tuned in at least once or every one or have spread the word about <laughs> our podcast. We've reached over almost 25 countries around the world, so we certainly appreciate that. And I think, Rel, let's just start with just how the weekend went for this team. Look, a 10-game losing streak. Everyone was talking about LeBron James coming in. I didn't think he was obviously going to get the 60-some points that he needed. Nah. But, of course, just in case ESPN2 decided to put the game on. So you had a national focus on this one and didn't look good at, at some point. So you're like, oh, my God, here we go again. <laughs> Not only if you extend the losing streak to 11, but you do so against the Lakers. But now you snap the losing streak. And, of yeah. course, it is against the Lakers. I feel like it counted double on Saturday, right? I feel like it did too. And there was, there was a lot on the line, you know, the, us potentially losing 11 straight, um, and potentially letting LeBron score 63 points. Yeah. <laughs> um, and also potentially letting them uh, leap us in the standings. You know, if we had lost that game, I think our records would have been the same, but they would own the tiebreaker if we had lost that. So, um, yeah, the guys really stepped up. B.I. looked great. Um, they let Anthony Davis go for just about the same amount of points as B.I. But I guess you kind of like if you look at it like they kind of canceled each other out, right. kind of equalize things, then, you know, that's kind of a, a fun way to look at it, too. But um, that game was a relief and, and it's good to be having fun watching basketball again because it was it was dark, man. So now the panic panic button's not in my room anymore. I took it off the desk. It's, it's, it's all the way out of the at. room. It's a, yeah, it's not in the room. It's not in the room. I'm chilling right now. Okay. <laughs> back to back wins. Uh, trade deadlines coming up. Uh, you know, not only in Willie Green, we trust, but also in David Griffin, we trust. <laughs> in Trajan Langdon, we trust. You know, so I think they're going to make, you know, whatever necessary move they need to make that makes the most sense, um, not just for this season, but for moving forward. So, um, yeah, we just really needed to end that skid. So much more, much more, you know, serene. Not that we've been able to pull that off. I think you made a great point um, as far as just them having fun again. And I know when you're yeah. on a 10 game losing streak, you tend to get tight. You tend to overthink things. You just want to snap that mm -hmm. streak. And I feel like they just went out there and played ball again. You've seen the confidence in Herb yeah. Jones, especially on the defensive end over these last couple of games. Uh, really getting in there. He had the double technical uh, last night uh, with, with Trey Lyles there. I, I feel like the attitude has shifted a little bit with this team, too. I think they realized that, look, we are a lot better than what our record shows. We're a lot better mm -hmm. than that 10-game losing streak. And I think they just need to find that in them uh, in order to kind of uh, break the rust and, and snap that losing streak over the weekend. Yeah, I think that um, they kind of they surprised us a little bit just with the way that they were able to bounce back. Um, but also there, I feel like they're still vastly underrated by other teams, uh, around the league. Um, I wasn't expecting for them to beat <laughs> Sacramento the way that they did, but I saw a tweet this morning from a guy who I think has been, uh, he's a season ticket holder or he covers the team or something like that. And he was, um, showing that it was Malik Monk's birthday I saw that. on, um, Saturday. Right. And so he's like, it was a weekend. It was his birthday and he parties and drinks all the time. So he's used to it. But the rest of the team, obviously they were gassed and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, or maybe they just caught the Pelicans at the worst possible time they could have. Um, and yeah, and maybe they might've had an off night and it's just a bad combination for them. But I don't think that you should look at the Pelicans and say, oh no, it should have been the other way around. And, and the King should be beating them by 30. Um, 
So yeah, I thought that that was kind of kind of funny. It made me laugh a little bit. Just saying that New Orleans nightlife is undefeated now, <laughs> as far undefeated. as going out. There was a they might have gone to Crew de Vue or something, you know. <laughs> Look, the Hawks have been here since uh, last night, so they uh, they have a couple days to take in the New Orleans scene here. As obviously they don't play till mm-hmm. uh, tomorrow. They're on the long end of a last game of a five game eleven day road trip that sent them all out west, and they're going to end in New Orleans. But as far as Sacramento is concerned. He had no Darren Fox out with personal reasons. I believe the word was he was expecting a child. And so he was not there. And again, when you're the Pelicans and you just snapped that losing streak, probably the the first thing you want to do is play again and keep playing and and ride the momentum. And I feel like that momentum trickled over into Sunday with a good team in Sacramento, realizing that, again, you're you're pretty far from Sacramento based on what you did during that 10-game losing streak, but every game Mm -hmm. helps as far as creeping your way back into the top of the of the Western Conference standings. And you took advantage of no De'Aaron Fox. I think you took advantage of feeling good after that win against the Lakers on Saturday. They were like, let's go out there and do this again. And and certainly uh, Trey Murphy had that mindset, the way he went off with those 30 yeah. points. He was 6 of 8 from 3. I, I, again, just the confidence in this team. It looked like a completely different team this over the weekend. They did. I don't know where that team has been hiding uh, for that 10-game skid. But, um, you know, hopefully – they're they're actually out of the funk, um, and even if they were to lose tonight, that uh, or not tonight, but um, when they play the Hawks, even if they lose against the Hawks, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily you know back in a funk or they they weren't really out of it or something like that. But um, just the way that they were playing, they're moving the ball and they're moving without the ball, and they're just doing all the right things. If they can just continue to do that, sometimes you're still going to end up losing. But if you give us forty eight minutes of good basketball, you give yourself the best chance to win win some games. Um, we don't have very many of those left this season. Uh, what are we at? 55 games played? Yes. And we're sitting at ninth right now. So, um, yeah, we, we're we nine and a half games back from first. And so is Golden State. So it's a tight race. Anything could, could go. But um, it would help if someone was to go on a skid like we did while we also go on <laughs> a 7, 8, 9, or 10 game win streak. Right. I mean, the difference is you're one – loss out of being fourth i mean that's a difference in a few game winning streak and, and a losing streak is how clumped together yeah. if the pelicans go three and one on this homestand i believe they have cleveland on friday is that after the hawks they get a couple days off and i think they yeah. take on cleveland on friday that's the end of a four game you go three and one on this road trip and then you're like okay you've set yourself mm-hmm. up for a good week then it's let's end the uh unofficial first half of the season head into the all-star break on a winning note and just see mm-hmm. where it's at also i think the whole dynamic of the Western Conference could change uh, over until Thursday or after Thursday, just based on the trade. I don't know which teams are going to decide to make that big splash, which teams are going to pack it up. I mean, obviously, Phoenix Suns offered Chris Paul to go to the Nets, to try to get Kyrie Irving. Does that mean? Crazy. I mean, obviously, that would be an upgrade for play wise for Kyrie Irving to come to, to Phoenix. So is Phoenix saying, mm-hmm. all right, when Devin Booker gets back, we're really trying to keep this window open of, of taking advantage of who we have. But if they don't get anyone, do they decide to trade some of their guys, uh, DeAndre Ayton, you know, Mikel Bridges? I mean, you don't know what direction they're going to go in, um, mm-hmm. what the Clippers might do. Obviously, they were in on Kyrie Irving, so they want to try to get over the hump. Will Sacramento add a piece? Um, it'll be interesting to see what teams do. Well, how will the Pelicans do as far as yeah. if they do add an OG and an OB, a Gary Trent, or someone along the lines of John Collins? Um, I, again, mm-hmm. The Kyrie Irving part of this kind of, I think, is now the domino uh, that fell that now you'll start to see other teams start to pivot because there were a decent amount of teams that were all in on trying to get Kyrie in just a matter of 24 hours. And quickly, Dallas got in, and some were saying that even Brooklyn's ready to retrade Spencer Dinwiddie if they need to. Um, What? I don't know about KD. Is KD going to say, get me out of here before Thursday or just get me out of here over the summer? Mm-hmm. It's going to be real interesting, but going back to New Orleans, I feel like you just needed a couple of games to see some good tape. And Willie Green always says that as far as he shows good and bad tape when it comes to watching film. And I think mm-hmm. they'll have a lot of good stuff to watch over the weekend. I think the big thing was the defense that was played. It was whether it was bad defense yeah. in the first half against the Lakers, they really shut them down in the second half. I thought they played really good defense all around against Sacramento, just allowing 104 points. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, the offense is going to be there, but how's the defense right. going to stack up against other teams? And you saw it this weekend that they really improved on that side of the ball. They did. So hopefully they can keep that up. 
Um, hopefully they can build some, some momentum, you know, um, what do you think about, I don't know if you saw that, uh, Dallas is maybe talking about moving Christian Wood, which, you know, what's new with Christian yeah. Wood, right? But what do you, uh, do you think they're going to move him at the deadline? I don't really see him ending up somewhere at this point that he's going to be long-term. I think he spent two years in Houston and that's the longest he's been in anywhere. And he's been in the league like seven years at this point. Yeah, what's crazy is some people thought because they got Kyrie Irving that Christian Wood's going to want out because the offense is not going to go through, not that it was going through him, but it, after Luka, it was Christian Wood as far as that offense going through him. Um, the fact mm -hmm. that you have Kyrie and Luka, Christian's touches are going to go way down, but they do need him defensively because they have a big drop off mm -hmm. now. But with, with Luka and Kyrie in the front court, or I mean, yeah, in the back court, um, that defense is going to be rough for Dallas yeah. and they need someone at the rim like Christian Wood. But um, I think they might be open to that. I, I think mm -hmm. Dallas is maybe trying to show Luca, hey, look what we're doing to try to, you know, we're putting <laughs> some people you. around you. Yeah, we're, we're trying to please <laughs> you here. Make sure you don't go anywhere. Um, but I thought it was crazy that Dallas is the one that that made the move for Kyrie yeah. Irving. Um, again, they're they going to just kept Brunson, right? <laughs> and not saying that Brunson, you know, look, Kyrie's a fantastic player, but you could have just kept Brunson, honestly. Like, he was doing a great job for them, and they just let him walk, right? So I, I don't know what that was all about, but um, I, I feel like a lot of people are automatically calling them, like, a contender, and they're going to come out of the West, and uh, I just don't see it. I don't think they, they don't put any fear in my heart. <laughs> so um, I'm, I'm glad that that saga wrapped up pretty quickly right like he requested the trade and two days later it was done yeah. so uh good luck to them but don't think that uh they're going to be coming out of the west at all <laughs> no i think you lost a lot of your depth you lost dorian vinnie smith has been a key part of that team you lose mm -hmm. his defense in that spencer dinwoody has been pretty solid for them offensively so you lose those two guys again you get kyrie irving so you get a huge upgrade and it's kyrie and luca but again you have to get stops and you're not getting them yeah. from those two guys. So you're going to have to outscore teams a bunch. And once we've learned, once you get to the playoffs, there's no more outscoring teams. You're going to have to play a little bit of defense. So if that's mm -hmm. what they're going to try to do here before Thursday, then maybe so. But I think you got to keep Christian Wood and try to ride with this team. But I definitely think there's other teams that are built better to survive a long run in the Western conference and Dallas mm -hmm. Denver still seems like that team. I wonder if again, they're, you know, if they trade Bones Highland, are they going to try to maybe get a piece for him that can maybe put them yeah. over the top to keep them as that team to beat in the West? Of course, you can't count out Memphis. You can never count out the Clippers, I think, too, with mm -hmm. a healthy Paul George and a healthy Kawhi Leonard playing a seven-game series. You can never count out the Golden State Warriors once Steph yeah. gets back. And you're hoping you can't count out the New Orleans Pelicans at some point <laughs> when they get fully healthy with Zion back and see what they do at the deadline. Look, there's that's four or five teams right there that honestly could yeah. represent the Western Conference uh, in the NBA Finals. So, uh, again, I think Dallas is up there, but I don't like you mentioned, I'm not like, oh, boy, just lock it up. Let's let's put <laughs> let's put Dallas in the NBA Finals right now. I don't see that. Um, but it was interesting to see that they were the team that said, all right, let's do this and uh, we'll see what happens with them and every team uh, come Thursday. So what, what do you think the next yeah. big move? If you're on bet online right now and they're saying the <laughs> next team, next player to be moved, who is it? Who do you think? Is it one of the Toronto guys, whether it's OG, Gary Trent? I know it's Fred Van Fleet's name. Yeah, I was going to. I was going to say one of them, but then Jay Crowder keeps popping up in my yeah. mind. Like, there's no way that this guy doesn't get moved by the deadline. And if they don't move them, they don't move them. What exactly are they doing over there in the Valley? Right. So um, there's just so much, I don't know, smoke, right, surrounding the guys in, in Toronto. Um, and, and both deals, I think, could happen. They, Gary Trent and OG could end up being out of there. And also, you know, Jay Carter's got to go. I just don't know which one will happen first. You know, I don't know which one takes priority in the Woj bombs and the Shams bombs. <laughs> I know. And now you, if you have your, those alerts up, they're going to be blowing up here in the next four days. Yeah. So just get they're ready. They're already pump faking us. I know. They're already pump faking us, man. They're we don't even know about, about the labor deal. Come on. I... <laughs> get that <laughs> out of here. Don't be talking about lockouts and making me nervous and stuff, man. Just let me know when somebody makes a trade, right? So, um... I think you brought up Sacramento and maybe they might want to do something. I think Sacramento and the Grizzlies, I don't like really see them needing anything right now. Um, yeah, I think they might stay the Sacramento, course. 
yeah, Sacramento might need something more than than the Grizzlies, but I think that the Grizzlies are pretty much uh, they're pretty much set. They just gotta figure out some <laughs> off the court <laughs> drama that they got going on over there, right? And so, laser pointers and all that stuff. <laughs> <laughs> that's a mess. And, but, uh, and punches to the groin and. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody brought up how the, the Grizzlies kind of, uh, they said copy. And at first I was like, what do you mean they copy us? That's kind of weird. But what they were saying was just as far as the, the trends and the wins and the losses. Because um, when we were losing, we were probably at like six or seven games straight. They had also lost like five games straight. Yeah. Um, and then we won a couple, and I think they might have won one. Um, but now they're back on like a two or three no, they, game They've lost nine of ten. They have lost nine yeah, of ten. They lost to the crazy. Raptors. Um no John Morant. Of course, you Dylan mm-hmm. Brooks are this suspension and Steven Adams has mm-hmm. been out. And so yeah. you factor wow. that in. I think it's just been injuries with them. And again, I think some of these teams don't really value the regular season as much as others, which is fine. Yeah. Um, it's just they rather be healthy and ready to go. And Memphis, I think, knows that they are a team that you know is one of those teams that you're gonna have to compete with in order to get through the Western Conference. So they're like Seating's all bundled up anyways. So besides yeah. Denver, it really seems like they're pulling away a little bit. Um, it could mm-hmm. you know, soon just be the number one seed. But everything else, and again, if Golden State's hovering around there, the last thing you want to do is see Golden State <laughs> in like a 2-7 matchup. Or a 2, or right. I don't think they're going to make the play in. But, you know, a 3-6 matchup, that's, you don't want that in the first round if you're if you're anyone else. So yeah. that stuff I was just is going to play if the in. Pelicans... A, that, I mean, that's yeah. going to be interesting. I think that stuff's going to play in at the end of the year, too is where Golden yeah. State is, what teams want to avoid the play-in, what teams want to avoid certain matchups, and they say they don't care about that, but they do. There's yeah. no way a team at the top is going to want to run into the Golden State Warriors in uh, the first round um, as if they are the home if they have home court advantage, a one, two, or three seed. So um, yeah. that's going to be interesting to, to see what happens. But um, before we keep going, don't forget, Bet Online remains your number one source for all your sports betting this season, everything from the NFL playoffs, which wraps up on Sunday, the pro and college basketball, UFC, MMA, and more. You'll always find the latest odds, team matchup info, player news, and game trends at Bet Online with live betting options, free con- contests, and live scores for almost any sport or game imaginable. Bet Online is truly the fastest and easiest way to bet all your favorite leagues and events. Head to the website today. Use your mobile device to join and receive your 50% off welcome bonus with your first deposit. Use the promo code BELIEVE, which is on our shirts, B L E A V, if you're watching on YouTube. To receive your rewards, betonline.ag, where the game starts. So, I want to go back to the Pelicans before we talk more about the trade deadline and what it means for them, because I think some injury situations might cause this team to make a move as well. Jonas now with a knee injury. Not sure how severe it is, but he did sit out on Sunday. Same goes Mm -hmm. for Brandon Ingram, which the way he talked about his toe after the game, it doesn't seem like it's fully healthy, and he might have to... What he kind of says yeah. is dealing with it. So mm-hmm. I wonder how that's going to play out throughout the whole season. And if back-to-backs are just not going to be a thing for him, whether he plays in one or the other, luckily you're able to yeah. get both. But I do think that kind of, especially with that being a concern and still don't know yet, hopefully this week we know a little bit more about Zion Williamson and his timetable to return. Um, Does that change the way the Pelicans look at this trade deadline a little bit? Um, I like to think that the front office isn't as reactionary as the rest of us are. Yeah. We're just like, oh, hey, everybody's hurt. You need to get somebody right now. Right. Because the deadline's coming up in like two seconds, right? Um, I, And that's why they get paid the big bucks, right? Like they have to step back, take a look at the bigger picture um, and kind of just kind of look at the landscape. And, and, and it's their job to see, you know, what other teams are doing and, and things like that. But um. I am interested to see what's going to happen this week with Zion and his um, reevaluation. And someone someone told me yesterday, because I had said he's getting reevaluated and hopefully he'll get cleared for like full practice. And they said, well, you know how this goes. It's going to be clear for one-on-one and then clear for two-on-two. No. And I was like, please don't say that. <laughs> I don't think we're please at that point with that. this injury. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. And I mean, what, what did they say? He started running last week or something mm-hmm. like that. So um, I think we we have no timeline on a, a return for Dyson at all. No. Um, and so that's a little bit worrisome. But I don't think that it would be one of those situations where they're like, hey, we don't know when Dyson's going to be back. Let's go get somebody. And right. Take his minutes. You know what I mean? So um, 
I, I have seen people float around the idea of needing to get someone who can be a second option when we're in situations where BI and Zion both aren't playing. Um, but then that person would have to be okay with being the fourth option when everybody's healthy, if we can get healthy and stay healthy. Right. So I don't know. There's a lot of interesting ideas floating around and stuff, um, dealing with what we need to trade for. And I'm still, I'm still thinking rim protection. And I think the more I think about John Collins, the more I get like a little bit comfortable with it. Um, I just don't know what the package would be going out in order to get him. And obviously in a perfect world, we all want to just send the same two players and maybe one or two picks. But um, yeah, I have, I just have no idea what's going to happen. And I don't remember hearing any rumors about the CJ thing. I feel like it just kind of happened, but I don't know, maybe, (laughs) maybe my brain just works a different way with the Pelicans memories and stuff, but I don't remember that being a thing. So they, I feel like they could potentially surprise us and pull someone out of a hat that we haven't even thought about yet. Yeah, I I think you're right. I think, Griffin, David Griffin does not really tend to leak anything unless he's trying to play a game of, you know, trying to get someone over here or again, I don't know. Um, But it is interesting with John Collins, as far as what you're talking about with his return, I think obviously they have dangled John Collins for over a year now. I think his value has diminished. His trade value has diminished him as a Mm. player has not diminished, but I feel like now the Hawks are kind of in a, well, you know, we can always just keep him if we don't find the right deal, but also at the same time, do you want to get something for him so you may be able to get away with? And again, they might be in a more of a developmental mode where they, again, with Jackson Hayes, if you find a team that is willing to just give him a shot, play him more minutes, um, they might see him, especially as a restricted free agent over the summer, might be worth taking a flyer on as far as because of his athleticism. So, and again, the Hawks are a team that are trying to stay under the tax. So it's not like they can take in a bunch in return as well. So, I think it's very interesting, especially these te- two teams playing tomorrow night. You know, maybe Landry Fields and David Griffin get together over lunch and say, hey, what do we got over? <laughs> what do we got here? We're not leaving until we have a deal. And again, <laughs> John Collins, his name's been floated with Phoenix as far as a drink Crowder exchange. And again, I think his, John Collins has a lot of talent. And I think mm-hmm. it hasn't been utilized as much, especially with DeJounte and Trey there in the backcourt yeah. for Atlanta. I feel like he's kind of hidden. He gets going and then he drifts away in the second half, but he's got talent there. I just don't think he's been utilized the right way in these last couple of years. Um, He would certainly help another team. It's just interesting with this team. If you are healthy and you still have Jonas on the roster, then obviously you Mm -hmm. have John Collins coming off the bench, which is kind of weird, but at the same time would be nice to think about Mm. when you had that depth at the front court and you can mix and match John with Zion. You can mix and match John with, with Jonas. Um, Mm -hmm. But again, he'd be an interesting fit here. Uh, and again, that's yeah. just one of the names that's been circulating around. Um, everyone's name has been circulated with a bunch of teams, so it's hard to really grasp mm-hmm. who the Pelicans are honing in on. Um, do you think they at least make a move, though? Do you think there is a move to be made for New Orleans, whether whether it's a big one or just a, a little one, just to maybe grab a shooter or mm-hmm. rim protector or whatever? I think we all kind of want a, a big splash, but it could end up being just like a little raindrop. Yeah. <laughs> like leave the tap, just boop, boop, little, little tap going. Um, so yeah, I, I think something, I think there's going to be some sort of move. Um, just kind of have no idea what it's going to end up being. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to be at the house. I'll have the TV on ESPN or whatever. I have the tweet notifications on. <laughs> Don't fall I'm for ready. the fake Woges again. I'm ready. And you're going to see a lot of year. stuff in the next few days because, oh, again, wow. agents leak stuff, front mm-hmm. offices leak stuff. Um, yeah. Just remember who you follow and who you see things from. There's really mm-hmm. a handful of people that when you see some, you're like, all right, that seems that it could be something. But there's others that mm-hmm. try to just float things out there. Um, what did we see the other and day? Someone worse, said Miami and checks. New Orleans are in on – what was it in on Kyrie Irving or whatever? And I'm just like, yeah, yeah. What? <laughs> no, I saw that. And it's like, who even, who came up with this, you know? But um, yeah, I feel like it'll be worse this season with all the, the blue check marks that are just being able to be bought now. Yep. Um, it's going to be a lot of pump fakes. So I always just rely on um, the notifications I have coming in from those two big guys in their tweets and other things I see. I'm like, okay, let me, <laughs> do a little research first, but, um, it's going to be an exciting time. And, and I'm, I'm mostly excited to just be able to like be available to like discuss these things. Cause last year for the trade, uh, that we did for CJ, 
uh, I was at work in the office mm. and I'm sitting at the desk like, dude, I got to get out of here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like I already went to lunch, so I can't like take my lunch right now to like get away from the desk. And there was a spaces going on and I was like, dude, come on, mm. <laughs> I'm missing all the action. So yeah, today I'll just be able to kind of be in the thick of it with everybody to see what's going on. So I'm excited. And we'll be in the thick of it as well. So as of now, we're going to do a trade deadline recap on Friday. Normally our Monday and Friday is when we do things. But if something breaks in the next couple of days, a good thing is, is that, again, we can we can do a podcast, whether it's a report, even if a trade is not official, we can react instantly. Um, mm -hmm. Good thing is Rel and I are pretty flexible as far as hopping on. So there could be an emergency podcast throughout the week. We just don't know if a deal comes up tomorrow we'll pop on tomorrow before the hawks game and and see if we can get one going or wednesday or whatever so as of now though we'll do a trade deadline recap on friday there'll be one game in between and that is tuesday as the pelicans uh welcome in the atlanta hawks um that was a nationally televised game and i believe they took that one off i think they I added think. it was supposed to be tnt yeah, that sounds kind of familiar, which I'm fine with that. You know, we typically uh, – it's funny that we won that Lakers game on ESPN2 because, um, you know, national TV games, we tend to lay a, a goose egg. So that was, a, that was a lot of fun. It was fun to go and watch back, too, and kind of hear the reactions, uh, to hear that Mike Breen bang when Trey hit one of those threes. That was awesome. <laughs> you know you know, it's a good broadcasting on Mike Breen. You know it's a big one when Mike Breen and that crew is in. That's their A crew. Um, so when you have yeah. Lisa Salters, a three-man three man boot there, that's certainly solid um, for them. Yeah, they, they put in Suns and Nets in there uh, for tomorrow mm. instead, which I know they're probably like, it's probably good for them because that's all they're going to talk about is the drama, but mm -hmm. there's not going to be a Kyrie Irving there and Kevin Durant still out. So the game nope. wise, that's not going to be a fun one to watch on national television, but it doesn't matter. Everyone mm -hmm. will be locked in on Hawks Pelicans. Right. And of course, then Lakers and Thunder, the last game as LeBron needs 36 points. I believe the past Kareem. Think he'll do it. Do you think he'll, or do you think he'll save it for uh, Thursday? Is Thursday Milwaukee? Yeah. Thursday's Milwaukee with a big storyline. <laughs> <laughs> yeah either way it's on tnt as well so of course the the national mm -hmm. they know what they're doing as far as that um exactly i don't think there's really any pressure to do it on either one so obviously it'll be done by thursday um mm -hmm. i don't but if you could probably get it done tomorrow if he's feeling good and they're he's heating up then you know that means he'd have like a 40 point game to break the record then <laughs> i'm sure I'm, I'm sure he's not going okay i want to get this done tonight i think it's more of just flow of the game because mm -hmm. everyone thought, you know, he needed 60 some points in the last two or 90 some points in the in the last two games. Yeah. And that's when the the ESPN two added him to the broadcast. And it's like, well, you got to average 45. <laughs> and he's not like, all right, I'm I got to score 45 in each of these games in order. Yeah. to get. I don't think he's really cared about that. I think one his uh, tweet was last night. Maybe it's me. Maybe it's me. What is that? A Facebook post? Like it's complicated. And whether it's a Lyle Taylor tweeted it and he goes. Maybe it's Maybelline. <laughs> yeah, maybe it's it's a Taylor Swift song or something. I don't know what's going on Man. with LeBron. But either way, it was kind of funny rest. that Kyrie did not go to the Lakers. So, yeah, people just they, they like they band together to make sure that certain deals don't happen for the Lakers. And I love it because why would you want to help them? Everyone else has to build through the draft like everyone else has to do that. And they're the only ones who just strictly are just like buying talent and just like trading and whatever else. Uh, or maybe like some tampering and things of that nature. <laughs> so it's like, what, we don't want to help these bozos. So I'm glad that people, you know, go out of their way to make sure guys don't go to, yeah. to Well, they're all in because they're only going to be as good as when LeBron's there. And if LeBron decides to hang it up or go play with Bronny or whatever, mm -hmm. Rob Polinka doesn't care about what draft picks he has. They're going to have to go into full teardown because when LeBron leaves, Anthony Davis is going to leave. You know that mm -hmm. Anthony's not going to mm -hmm. stay there and go build around me. Uh-uh. <laughs> He's going to go somewhere uh, else or follow LeBron or whatever. So yeah. it's going to be... He's going home to Chicago. <laughs> That's what I think. That's not a really a bad assessment there. If they can hang on to their guys with DeMar and all them. Again, this could be two, mm -hmm. three years down the road. But I think Rob Polinka right. has pushed all his chips in saying, I got to get one more title out of LeBron James while he's here. So that's why he doesn't care about. Yeah. He'll give up 2029 first round picks and 2027 first round picks because it's all he has left. And he'll throw <laughs> Russell Westbrook out there, too, because of the money and see if he can get someone mm -hmm. big. But that's what he's going to dangle. That's really all he has left. 
as far oh, as getting the fifth medals. graders to trade. Yeah. <laughs> he's got some fifth graders to trade. That's it. I don't see them getting another championship. And not just because I hope they don't get one. I just don't. I don't see it happening. I don't see them making the right moves and putting the right people uh, on the court with LeBron to be able to to win. So um, someone would have to yeah. like help them out and the Lakers would have to fleece a trade in order to put them in a position to be like, oh, they're yeah. a contender. They might make the playoffs. They might be at an eight yeah. or nine in a play in or if they get to six or whatever. But you know what this team is. They added Rui mm-hmm. Hachimura, who's a nice piece. They add a little bit of depth yeah. there. But again, that that move is not putting you over the top. And so for Polinka, he's got to figure this out because the Mm -hmm. clock is ticking for them, the Lakers. So LeBron could say, train me. I want out at, I mean, you don't know, (laughs) you don't know how many years LeBron wants to play. He's going to get the scoring title here uh, Mm -hmm. in the next couple of days. You just don't know what's going to happen. So I think that's where Polinka's like, Oh crap. I gotta, I gotta hit a home run on these trades. No singles and doubles anymore. It's, I gotta figure out what to do with Russell Westbrook. And if I can't get rid of him in a trade, I don't know what else you're going to oh, do. Yeah. Cause I hadn't even really, yeah. Russ opted into this year. Right. So he's, Oh yeah. He's a it's $40 million on the boat. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, they might have to, Ooh, this is something to think about. That's really the only piece have you have to, to dangle unless you, there's yeah. more picks. It's like, I forgot about Russ after the Kyrie thing was like done with, I completely forgot about Russ potentially being traded. Like it just left my mind yeah. until just now. And I'm like, Oh yeah, that's kind of, a thing that might need to happen. So mm, we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> but we'll be here for every step of the way, no matter if it's a Pelicans trade or, again, trades that are going to affect the Western Conference race. But everything you need to know about the trade deadline, we'll have for you on Friday. We'll get you ready for Pelicans and Cavs and also recap the week that was as far as the trade deadline is concerned. Should be a fun matchup yeah. between the Hawks and the Pelicans. Again, the Hawks looking to end their five-game, 11-day West Coast swing with a win because they are 2-2 two and two as they had wins against Utah and Phoenix but got thumped by Denver and probably the toughest back-to-back in the <laughs> NBA, which is Utah and Denver. I wouldn't wish that upon anyone. Um, and, of course, Pelicans looking to extend their winning streak to three. So, Rel, this was fun. Nice to talk about a few a couple of wins over the weekend. And maybe I'll, sure. I'll, I'm sure I'll be texting you throughout the week with all the trade rumors and all that, but I'll officially talk to you on Friday unless something goes down before. Yeah, we'll be tweeting battery emojis at each other yes. in the meantime. Shout out to Billy, 22 and 16 last night off the bench, man. Yeah. That was great. Batteries also, are fully Garrett charged, Temple. that's why. The batteries <laughs> yeah. are fully charged. <laughs> Garrett Temple last night, one field goal attempt. A step back three-pointer? Is that what it was? Hey, when it's when it's going right, it's going right. That's when he knows. I was already in the car. I was already in the car. I heard the call on the uh, on the radio, and I was like, I'm sorry, what is happening that was awesome. I got to ask, was, was Graf freaking out at the Garrett Temple step back? <laughs> He's just like, he got it. <laughs> I'm like, wow, this is awesome. But now, and also I'm going to defend myself because, you know, I typically don't leave early, but I really wanted some ice cream last night and I was trying to go and get some. And that's why I left the game early. And plus we were up by a million points. So there's my excuse before anybody asks. But yes, you don't need an that excuse. Is it. <laughs> you make your own schedule, Rel. The rest of us will follow. <laughs> you lead. And so if you leave early, then everyone else go leave early. It's okay. Especially the for Kings ice cream. Early. <laughs> King, the Kings didn't get there. They never arrived. <laughs> they were uh they were still in the French oh, quarter. Man. So sucks to suck. Yeah. As as Todd would like to say when I was there, that's a them problem. And so yep. we'll see if the Hawks are a them problem on Tuesday, seven six thirty PM tip central time. Yeah. On I guess Bally's then and News Talk 99.5 WRNO. Enough from us. Hope you all have a great rest of your week. And until Friday or maybe even sooner, for Rel Myers, I'm Daniel Salerson. Thanks for listening to Pells and Whistles presented by Bet Online right here on the Believe Network.